To see my paintings, you have to really see them in person. The light changes as you pass by them and you see different forms. She's willing to take extraordinary chances, both in terms of the subject matter and in terms of the way she actually works. What Karen has done with the black paintings is truly innovative. Karen has really taken black places that no one has taken it before. I want my work to be felt. I want people to walk away with a feeling of light and hope. If light can be a metaphor for anything, I think it's hope. I've been painting black paintings since 1988. The real reason for the black was to make a contrast to the light. So in a way, they're really light paintings. At the time, it really was about light hitting the brush marks and the form. But I didn't quite understand the full implications of it until the work developed. And then the light became part of the concept so that light itself took on a different kind of meaning. Well, black has certainly been around for a while. I mean, obviously people think of Goya and they think of the Spaniards and, and, and Velasquez, but it, it was certainly around through the abstract expressionists, people like Motherwell and Ed Reinhardt, really made it a color. I think Karen has really fitted herself into a color that had not been used that much, had not been investigated by anyone to this degree, not even by Reinhardt, and found in black all sorts of nuances and possibilities that people hadn't found before. It seems through her, it, the, the colors almost exploded in a way. Nobody has tried to do, use black as Karen has used black to fully depict and model a figure. I don't know anyone else who's done that, and it's not so important to me that nobody's done that before, that it's new, that it's original. You know, that's kind of maybe icing on the cake, but that it's done so beautifully and so monumentally, and that's really what I appreciate about it. Karen's use of black really, it opens up the color for me. It really makes me see it as a color that is expansive, as expansive in its own way as blue or brown or red and is available for the richest possibility of personal and intellectual expression. I never thought about black that way before seeing, seeing Karen's work. Black has a lot of meanings which it starts with, which have to do with, um, you know, sadness or darkness or, you know, all these kinds of emotions that we, uh, that we associate with black. But for me, the black becomes a context. The black is history. The black is the past. It's what the images are coming out of the darkness of the past into the present light. The royalty paintings contain some tour de force, really tour de force painting, and, uh, and work, which I love to look at just as painting. The amazing variety of textures that she can make with black, the way she can actually produce the sense of fabric, and the sense of architecture and a sense of both extreme sort of naturalism and, and extreme fabrication. The diversity and the complexity and the ambition of the paint itself. Each of the royalty that I chose 
were special in their own way and did what were good things for their country. Louis Couture's is the reason we have the avant-garde. He made it all once a day, changing clothes. All of the kind of trickle-down culture that comes to us as avant-garde comes from Louis. And the light in this one really shifts and changes. When you're on this side, of it, all the way over, it's as if she's in the dark, in a room, in a big room, and she's lit from the inside. And it's kind of dark outside, glimmers, but dark. But then, as you move past it, and also her face changes, as you move past, the face starts to change. She gets more dead on with you here. She kind of grins on each side. And over here, now it's bright outside. And she's backlit. She can make painting do all sorts of things that feel more like film or sculpture or some kind of time-based art. The painting through the brushwork actually seems to evolve. And then I think that they're highly theatrical, so you get some relation to cinematic culture that roots them in the present. These are paintings that could not have been painted in Velasquez's time or, or Goya's time or even in Ed Reinhardt's time. People have often mistaken the person who's done my paintings as somebody really big, because they are big. Most of them are very large. I think the reason that I paint large paintings is because I want the experience to wrap the viewer. Just put it back again. The paintings seem to be the right size, which is not common. I mean, most people, most painters have a real trouble with scale, and even people who know how to wield the brush and who know something about color can't actually create an image that seems to be right for the canvas. There's a rightness to it, and the rightness makes us believe in it. The very first sunflowers were painted because we had taken a trip in Spain. We saw these incredible fields of sunflowers everywhere, but some of them had already died and were like these brown creatures standing there. It was really haunting. The sunflowers have something of what the, the royalty paintings do. I think they have their own kind of regality or a certain kind of grandeur. They have their own art history, obviously, most particularly going back to Van Gogh, where there was so much identified with sun. So now you have Karen doing these sunflowers in black painting that seem to flower almost in the blackness. So they have this gravity to them, and by presenting them through blackness, she almost makes them more emblematic of survival. They have a particular kind of poignancy because they're so ephemeral.